Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is the Hawk Picks Picking Party. And on this channel, I really haven't featured gear that often. I mean, I've featured like the 70s Phase Craze episode, and we looked at the Ebo and using delay effects, and I've featured like the TC Electronic did a looper in certain episodes, and we've talked about pedal boards and mini amps, but uh, I haven't really talked about picks. I've talked about picks a little bit, but definitely uh, these picks from Hawk Picks over in England, I've been using these for about seven years. And I really love these picks. They're great. They're the only pick I use. And I did use an assortment of various brands and, you know, gauges and stuff like that before I, you know, stumbled on these. But there's something really eye-opening and interesting and inspiring about these picks. And I'm sure some of the viewers out there might be thinking, yeah, it's just a guitar pick. Big deal. But that actually is, you know, a very important, you know, component of your tone and your sound and your rig. Obviously, your instrument, your amp, uh, you know, effects and cables and stuff like that. You know various pedals and stuff like that but then you know the strings you use the pickups you choose even the strap you know that you use um, all the way down to the picks that you select and use you know it's very individualized and certain people don't even use picks they just use their fingers you know think of mark knopfler or jeff beck or Derek trucks or somebody like that you know some people use little jazz size picks which i'm a big fan of jazz size you know guitar picks there's the standard size there's heart shaped and big triangles and all sorts of stuff. The Pig of Destiny, of course. So truth be told, I love guitar picks. I've always loved guitar picks. Since I was a kid and I first started playing guitar, you know, I'd go into a music store and maybe I couldn't afford to buy a new guitar, but I could grab a handful of guitar picks and usually had a dollar or two or I could buy some picks. And that's when it started, you know, when I started buying, you know, different materials and sizes and colors and, you know, picks made out of stone and wood and all these different materials coins and stuff like that but then over the years you know i kind of selected you know a very specific pick and i was actually attending an andy timmons guitar clinic you know when i was back in high school that was a long time ago and i was attending this clinic and he did some q a and stuff like that and at the end you know we got to meet andy and he signed an autograph and i just looked at him and i said hey what kind of pick do you use and he was like hang on you know and he reached in his pocket Pulled out, it was a purple Tortex, you know, a Dunlop, like Jazz H3, I think they're called. Just a basic, you know, uh, Jazz Tortex. And I took that home and I was like, wow, that's the pick that Andy prefers. And I started using it. And at that time, I was using a normal size guitar pick, just a standard like Fender Medium or whatever. But then I started to use Andy's pick. And I actually liked it. I was like, wow, okay, it's smaller. You know, there's, there's less pick to kind of make with, you know, contact with the strings. But there was also less pick in your hand, too, and I kind of like the smaller size and the kind of shred, you know, ability that it, it provided. So really interesting pick. And it doesn't really matter what type of pick you use. You can use a standard size, or you can use your fingers and not even use a pick. Or you can use the big giant triangle or the pick of destiny or whatever. But it's kind of an individualized thing, you know, very specific to a certain player. And I've noticed certain players, you know, they only use a certain brand or type of pick and they shy away from trying other picks. But you should definitely try to, you know, experiment and try full size picks, jazz size picks, all sorts of stuff. Just shake it up and see what happens. You never know. You might completely change the pick that you're currently using to something else. So another thing I really like about these Hawk picks is the material they're made of, that composite kind of top secret material. I'm not really sure what it is, but you can definitely tell it's not a cheap piece of plastic. It has a little bit more weight and mass to it. And they're also very durable and resilient. They last a lot longer than just a regular or standard guitar pick as far as the tip and the size that usually wear away. You know, Hawk picks last like 10 times longer than a standard pick. And another thing is the tone. It really makes the single notes or chords that you play, they seem to pop or jump differently with a hawk pick. And here's just an unamplified, you know, scale run. But it really does seem to make the things you play pop.
you know, it's not a noticeable like night and day difference, but there is a little bit more, you know, kind of pop or energy you know, using a hawk pick, I've noticed. You can definitely hear it on acoustic guitar, but you can definitely hear it on electric guitar too. Up next is the picking party portion of this video, and we're actually going to approach this little part of C major, and we're going to attack and use uh, three very common fingering combinations on the guitar. And uh, we're going to basically start right here on this G note. We've got G, A, B, C, D, E. And you can see we've got this whole step, whole step pattern right there. Very common. G, A, B, C, D, E. All right, then the next pattern's right here. We're going to start on A. There's A, B, C, D, E, F. And now we're doing this whole step, half step pattern. You know, index, third, and pinky. And go up again, now we've got this, uh, you know, B, C, D, E, F, G in this half step, whole step pattern, or index, middle, and pinky. And then we're going to end with the same fingering pattern we had where we started, but we're going to be up here, and now it's C, D, E, F, G, A, right there. You know, whole step, whole, whole step again. So we started with this move to this, move to that, and then end it with this. And what I want you to do is you're going to basically, you know, you can pick your way through it and pick every note. And there I'm picking every single note. play with like a half and half legato pick. Or you can also play around with just pure legato. But we're going to lock on to these little fingering patterns and we're going to start to mutate and change things as this workout unfolds. But that's step one right there. Now let's take that, we're going to ascend through that scale sequence and then we're also going to descend and go backwards like this. <laughs> And there I literally climbed up. And then starting right there, I go backwards and descend. And I kind of ended there, you know, sliding that B to C at the end like that. So now we're going to sequence that pattern of notes and we're going to do this. So we're going to go up four notes, come back down, and then go all the way up those six notes like that. And go to the next position right there and do the same thing. Go to the next position, do it again. And that final position right there. So ascend like that. And then descend doing the same thing backwards. You know, great little workout there, and you can definitely, you know, push that and go as fast as you want. But really what I think you should do, you know, for the workout part of this, um, is really just connect with the strings and pick, you know. Basically pick the note as soon as you fret it. You know, don't pick early or a little bit late. You want to make that connection at the exact same time right there. You know, and synchronize both your hands together like that. If you're doing the half and half or legato, you can definitely kind of, you know, have some authority or conviction while you're playing it. But if you're going to pick everything, make sure you're picking and fretting at the exact same time. You know, synchronize those hands together. Here's another sequence I like to use as a warm up, and it has kind of a classical flavor like this. <laughs> See, we're actually grabbing one note on the B string and then the two upper notes on the high E and then we flip that and grab the lower note on the high E and the two upper notes on the B like that. So it's this kind of half and half like this. And then you want to flip it to this. You know, I love 
that sequence because you're hearing, you know, part of the lower, you know, section and the higher section mixed and then it flips the other way. And then go to the next position right there and do it again. And do it again right there. And then do it again right there. Now for the descending variation, you can start on the higher note. Or you could literally just do the exact same thing we did on the way up, you know, and just descend. Like that. Or you could do that weird... more of a challenge there it's kind of clunky and, and kind of weird under your fingers but that's a great workout for sure here's yet another variation of this kind of scale sequence you know fingering idea and now we're doing this so we're starting here on C descending on the B string and then you reach up and grab the high E and then descend down to that B note so the first half and the second half sequence and then do it again right here and then right there and then end right there now you could uh, descend a couple different ways but there's the ascending version and if you want to ascend you could do that you can start on the highest note and then ascend. You know, really interesting little sequence, and I love kind of flipping around and doing things different like that, where it kind of you know moves your fingers in a different you know pattern or has a different flow to it. Definitely a big challenge too. Now there are hundreds if not thousands of other scale sequences and you know workouts and things we can discover just using that little pattern of notes. But if you've been following, you know, my channel and watching videos on my channel here, especially in the Scales and Tails series, and some of the, the ramp videos too, but you're probably going to guess what I'm going to do next. So we just unlocked all this stuff right here. Now let's move it down an octave. And that's going to be beneficial because we're flushing this out somewhere else on the neck. But we're also going to be stretching a little bit more. So it's going to kind of include some more stretching, you know, in this workout or warm-up. So now instead of doing this... <laughs> Let's move that down an octave and start on G right there. So there's your first pattern. There's your second pattern. Your third pattern or fingering. And then that final pattern right there. And then you can slowly start moving through all those different sequences we just uncovered, like this one. pretty sure you can guess what's going to happen next then you move it down another octave and now you're stretching even more and you're on the lower you know bass strings the low e and the a right here and then there's that first sequence that kind of classical half and half thing something in one area or position on the fretboard and then you're attacking it and then you're taking that information and moving it somewhere else and then attacking it again you know in a different octave and then we moved it again and attacked it yet again so that's something you definitely want to do forever always do that learn a lick and then variate it and mutate it and move it around you learn a workout or an exercise or a scale sequence or something learn it and then mutate it and play with it and make variations and mutations of it. You never know. You might write a new solo or a new song 
or at least you know construct and create like a new workout or warm-up that you can use as an exercise. I've had lots of students over the years ask about picking and picking technique and how should I hold my hand and you know what fingers should I use and honestly you can do this however you want. I mean there's really not one set way or one right way and then a hundred wrong ways or whatever. I mean literally if you notice and really watch guitarists or talk to guitarists or read interviews and stuff like that, you're going to discover that everybody does this differently. Some players don't use picks, some people hybrid pick, some people speed pick, you know, some people hold the pick like that between their thumb, index, and middle. Some players hold it between their thumb and middle. You know, I've seen all sorts of different angles and variations and kind of holding it like that on the side, holding it like that like you're pinching the pick. You know, I've seen lots of different variations here. You've got the fan kind of technique with your fingers. You'll see like Warren Martini and George Lynch doing stuff like that. I've seen the finger, you know, kind of pinky resting against the body of the guitar. I think Steve Morris, John Petrucci, uh, Michelangelo Badio does something similar like to this where he kind of rests his fingers, or at least he used to. I assume he still does. But, you know, rests his fingers on the face of the guitar and kind of does that. Of course, Eddie Van Halen and his flying, you know, tremolo picking technique. There's tons, you know, Marty Friedman and it's kind of crab claw thing. There's so many different techniques and approaches. Paul Gilbert and Ingve and Steve Vai and whoever you're looking at, there's, you know, thousands of different ways to do this. So my personal opinion, you know, as a professional music instructor or whatever, find what works for you. Find the pick that feels right for you. Find a way of holding the pick that works for you. If you got some weird contorted Marty Friedman thing, then make it work. You know, he makes it work brilliantly. So if you can make that work, then good luck. Or if you want to tackle the Van Halen kind of floating tremolo picking thing or some other variation, you know, holding your hand in a ball, fanning your fingers out, you know, other variations of this, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And, you know, never listen to somebody that says you're doing that wrong. Because if, if they say that to you, that just really means you're probably doing something different than they would do. It doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. I hate when people do that. You're doing that wrong. It's like, well, maybe I'm just doing it different. You know, chill. And this is just my experience using Hawk Picks. You know, your story might be different than mine. You might seek out one of these picks and use it and, and you might hate it and throw it in the trash. I mean, I hope that's not what happens, but it's possible. Because we're all different. You know, and as much as people want to claim that we're all the same and we're equal, in certain ways, you know, we should be different. You know, different guitars, different gear different songs, different styles and sounds and tones and stuff like that, we shouldn't be the same. You know, we shouldn't be using the same equipment or gear. Even though I do notice a lot of people in the modern age, they have similar guitars, similar rigs, their music sounds similar, they even have similar hairstyles and stuff where I can't even tell them apart. Where it's like, is this that guy or that guy? I can't even, I can't keep track of you guys anymore. But as far as picks are concerned or strings or cables or pedals or whatever it is, you know, in your rig, um, you should definitely experiment, you know, and if you've always used the same pick, try something different. Just shake it up. You never know. If you've always used a standard size, then try a jazz size. Or if you've always tried the same brand, then try a different brand or a different thickness or material or whatever. You never know when that window of inspiration might open and something new kind of floats your way. It could be a guitar pick, obviously a new guitar or something like that might inspire you. But even something as simple as a guitar pick does too. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.